You're listening to Seattle Real Estate Podcast. So can you imagine being on a cruise ship? You, you've been out at sea, you've been going from country to country, port to port, whatever, for a couple of weeks, 14 day solid cruise on a luxury cruise liner. You're going back home to your final port where you're going to take a bus, you're going to take a shuttle to the airport, whatever. And as you're headed to that final port, over the loudspeaker comes, ladies and gentlemen, we will not be arriving at our regularly scheduled port. We will be going to the Bahamas, where you will be taking a ferry back to your final destination, which is Florida. And the underlying reason is we've got a $1.4 million outstanding balance for fuel on this vessel, which we haven't paid, corporate hasn't paid. And there's an arrest warrant out for this ship. If we dock the ship, we're going to get arrested. We don't want to do that. None of that second part was, you know, over the loudspeaker. But that's literally what happened to somewhere around 700 passengers recently. They were headed home. Yeah, we're going to take a little, we're going to go this way. We're going to go to this country. Bahamas, not that far from Florida, right? But could you imagine? That's what we're talking about today. Why are we talking about this today? This is one of those things where at the onset of the whole coronavirus thing, the cruise industry just got decimated. You're, you're stuck on a tin can, big floating tin can that you could, that could just be a big petri dish for the coronavirus. I mean, that's what people initially thought. Since then, we, you know, we found out a lot of different things. Air ventilation, Rona doesn't really live on, you know, hard surfaces like we thought it did. But cruise industry, it's just been crushed, right? And here locally, and we're not locally, but in the United States, you've got some, some of the big cruise ships are, they're, they're going back again and they're kind of slowly emerging. But this is, this is an international ship. This is not from the U.S. So it, it, it is done. And we're going to read about CEO stepping down. There's a bunch of layers to this story that are pretty interesting, pretty wild. We're going to talk about those. Before we do, before we jump on in, if you're new here, welcome. My name is Sean Reynolds. I own a couple of real estate companies and I read the news from that perspective. Sometimes about business, sometimes about real estate, sometimes about other crazy stuff too. All right. Let's do this. Cruise ship with 700 on board diverted to the Bahamas to avoid U.S. arrest warrant. Uh, j- just the whole shocking thing of, yeah, let's go there. Oh, no. Yeah. So what are we going to do? Well, you better call corporate and figure it out. Got a warrant out for the arrest of this ship. They're going to detain the ship for outstanding fuel. Not good. Not good at all. So if you think that your bill collectors are bad, you know, think again on a big corporate level. This is this is impacting this business's ability to do said business. And they are basically, they're winding down. They are probably in the liquidation phase. Is if you've got, they've been trying to make this go. And guess what? The whole dynamics of cruise industry during the Rona, not exactly fantastic, right? So this is one of those, this is one of those Things that happens and you kind of go, all right, that makes sense, but I need to know what is the story here. Crew and passengers in shock after U.S. arrest warrant issued for luxury line. It was almost laughable. We literally just said, are you kidding? (laughs) That would be my reaction. If you were on this cruise ship and you'd paid your good money and you're going back home, you're like, okay. Most of the passengers that had this delay, they were delayed like a day or so. How about all the crew for this, for this ship? You got to get this ship elsewhere to wherever it's going. You need a big crew to run a ship like this. Obviously, you don't need the full crew to, uh, if you don't have passengers, but you need some kind of crew. What a mess. A musician aboard a luxury cruise liner that diverted to the Bahamas to avoid the U.S. warrant over unpaid fuel bills said its 700 crew and passengers were shocked to learn the vessel was fleeing like a pirate ship. When I read that, I was like, yeah, I'm going to do this podcast because now you've got some drama, right? Ultimately, you've got people losing their jobs because this this cruise line is going down, right? This cruise line is – if you've got 
bills like that outstanding. And as we come to learn, read more and more on, the, on this, uh, this one's uh, the for this ship, the Crystal Symphony. It was an outstanding fuel bill of somewhere I've read one point two million dollars to one point four million dollars, but they're somewhere around three and a half million to four and a half million dollars outstanding for the company that owns all these cruise ships. But I mean, I'm sure they're independent corporations. They're run independently. So it's like, okay, we need to seize the the Crystal Symphony. We got to get our money back. Could you imagine wanting to seize a cruise ship? I mean, that is one way to go about getting your fuel bill paid. But what are you going to do with it? Are you going to liquidate it? This is kind of the first step, right? All right. We're going to put out a, a warrant for the arrest of this ship, this massive luxury cruise liner. The Crystal Symphony was due to dock in, in Florida on Saturday last weekend after a two-week Caribbean cruise, but changed course after a U.S. judge granted an arrest warrant for the ship over a $1.2 million fuel bill. I mean, yeah, it's, it, this is just one of those stories where you're like, okay, well... Maybe I won't take a cruise anytime in the near future. Not really sure about the solvency. And that's been the big, huge thing with the cruise industry, right? All right, you guys are good to go. Uh, not so much. All cruises halted. All right, we're going to allow you to you know, pay your deposits and make arrangements. Uh, about that trip that you had organized, mm, we're not doing it. So a lot of this, because... You know, let these cruise ships, they go into other countries. Other countries are changing their protocol all the time. Okay. Yeah. We told you that we'd have six stops on this cruise, this luxury cruise, you know, that you're going to take. Well, we got to ixnay two of those because they're just, they're not taking, they're not taking ships at the moment. I mean, just so much stuff up in the air due to Rona. A lot of this is coming back. I mean, cruise industry here in the United States is, you know, kind of coming back. It's nowhere near what it was, but it's going to take a while to work through that. And this is some of that fallout, right? The 300 passengers aboard Crystal Symphony were left scrambling to rebook onward travel arrangements because that flight that they were expecting to make, well, instead of taking that flight out of a Florida airport, they're taking a ferry because they're in the Bahamas taking a ferry back to Florida and they're going to be off by a day. And, you know, when you book your, when you book a cruise, I've done one cruise in my lifetime. My kids were very little. We took the nanny. I was pretty young. I didn't really enjoy my experience, mainly because my kids were pretty young and they were on the cruise with us. And, um, my, my one memory was that the disco was pretty cool. Yeah, that was fun. Um, but my youngest son was, I don't know, was he maybe three? And he was a big three-year-old. And he decided it would be fun to run away from mom and dad and the nanny and run down the hall of one of these enormous cruise ships and hop into some other guest's room and close the door. Um, yeah, that, that was quite terrifying. Um, after I thought about it, I'm like, all right, but you know, where's he going to go? Where's he going to go? And the minute these people, you know, really engage with my son, they're going to realize, yeah, son, you need to go back out in that hallway and you need to go do your thing. Cause he was real big and he was real active. So those are some of my major memories of the Mexico cruise of two of 1990, whatever. I did one and done on cruises. It's not really a, the, the, the unlimited eating I could see people really getting in, in, into that. The unlimited drinking. I think it was unlimited drinking. I can't. Yeah, I think it was. I can't remember. I could see people really getting into that and not really having to think for themselves. I'm more of a, hey, I want to go out and explore and kind of see some off the beaten path stuff. But if you're into just, all right, here's what you're doing today. I'll make sure you get off. Make sure you get back on. If that's your thing. You know, it's probably not a bad way to go. It's kind of like an all-inclusive resort, right? But it floats and it takes you to, you know, tourist trap destinations. So the 300 passengers aboard Crystal Symphony were left scrambling. So they've got, um, and the shoes, 400, crew of 400 people faced an uncertain future after owners, Crystal Cruises, was placed into liquidation. All right. All right. So we're going to have a little bankruptcy action here. We're going to place this corporation and its said vessels into receivership. 
That's literally what's going on. But hey, you know what? Even though you guys are fired, employees are fired, could you stick around just a little bit longer? Because we need to get these ships where they're going. And you guys know these ships better than anybody else. And we'd like to have you stay on for another however long, however long that is. How does that work? Does the receivership bring in a whole new crew? I don't really know. But um, musician Elio Pace, who boarded the ship on Tuesday in Dominica, told The Independent he had just finished a rehearsal on Friday when he was informed an arrest warrant had been issued for the ship under Admiralty Law, Law of the Sea. uh, There was literally eight seconds of silence. Nobody could say anything. It was almost laughable. We literally just said, are you kidding? Hey, during the Rona, anything can happen. And this story is a good example of that. This story is an example of a company that probably had some issues before all of this started, before all the cruise industry happened, you know, tanking with the whole coronavirus thing. This is one of those things that the coronavirus and its impact on its specific business were really just, you just put a spotlight on it. It's like you're a kid and you're putting a bug underneath a microscope or a, uh, a uh, magnifying glass with the sun, you know, ah, how much, how much can this bug take? You know, just uh, how, how long is it going to take to burn this thing up? Um, so there was literally eight seconds of silence. Horrible. No one could believe the ship was having to divert away um, from the U.S. waters like a pirate ship. So it didn't get arrested. <laughs> I mean, the whole pirate ship thing, it, it, it absolutely makes sense though, right? All right. Can, can you imagine corporate? Okay. So there's an arrest out for the ship. Have we dealt with this before? Can you get legal on the phone? Can you get head counsel on the phone? We're going to need to talk to them right away. Do they know that an arrest warrant has been issued? Probably their legal gets is in the hearing or whatever, gets notification. All right. We got an email today. This isn't good. We're, we're going we're gonna to have to deal with this. All right. And so the captain is speaking to corporate, who is speaking with their attorney. Their attorney's like, all right, flip her around. You go into the Bahamas. We got to figure something out before we turn the ship back in. I mean, yeah. So you, then you declare bankruptcy, and then you've got bankruptcy protection and all that good stuff over a fuel bill. What started as a fuel bill, there could be there's there is more than likely if you haven't paid the fuel bill, probably haven't paid the outstanding food bill, the maintenance, the docking, all that stuff. And big ships, they are expensive. Little ships, they are expensive. I got to put my boat in dry dock and have the the rudder worked on. Somehow banging into a rock with my rudder didn't, you know, it's not not a good thing. No, that's, yeah. Speaking from on board the cruise ship Sunday morning, Mr. Pay said the passengers would be disembarking in the Bahamas around 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time and being placed in a courtesy ferry to Fort Lauderdale. The interesting thing about this is that Florida is so close to basically international waters with the Bahamas, right? So they can hang out in the Bahamas and send people via a um, via a ferry that, that runs regularly. I mean, where else do you have the opportunity to do that kind of thing where you're in such close proximity? I watch videos about guys taking their big offshore racing boats and you know, they'll do like an hour and a half to the Bahamas. <laughs> you know, they're just cruising, just boom, 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 you know, hitting those, um, hitting the open, open waves, but they're just basically flying and you get to another country in very short amount of time because it's not very far away, right? So Mr. Pace said passengers would remain calm throughout the ordeal as they work to change their flights, accommodation, and car rental bookings. What a nightmare. That's part. That's the part of travel that I don't enjoy. Say you got to kick out your vacation or whatever for another day or two because something comes up. You got to deal with something or you just want to stay for another couple of days. I remember some of my vacations by sitting around those two hours making those changes. And it's just, it, to me, it's just a pain in the rear. Typically, you got to be on customer service and they're verifying everything to the T because they don't want to F it up because, you know, you're just going to have to 
deal with it later. And so you've got, you know, you've got your rental car, you've got your flight, you've got your connection, whatever, and just trying to make all this happen. And uh, you've got a hotel in there somewhere too, if you're extending. So, you know, can you make it just, just a nightmare, but if it's not your doing, that would be even more frustrating, right? It's like, okay, all right, we're going to have to get on the phone. We're going to have to get on the computer. We're going to have to call the travel agent, whatever it is. And by travel agent, I mean the person Expedia that you got to talk to. That's why I use Expedia, not because they are a Microsoft company, but because I've used them forever and I actually know how to navigate their system. And yeah, everybody's like, oh, you should use Kayak. Yeah, maybe. I know how to work Expedia. And they give me tiny little bits of reimbursement in the forms of some kind of credit. And I think, oh man, I am a skilled traveler here. I'm not, but um, I know how to navigate the website. So there you go, right? So the passengers that come here know that what we're doing, there's no panic, there's no tantrums. They're just getting on with it. So it sounds like a fairly disciplined transition from regular two-week cruise ship to pirate ship on the run, because that's literally what it was. I would have loved to have heard some of those conversations. All right. So what are we going to tell the passengers? Uh, I, I I think honesty is the best policy. No, no. We, we got to come up with something else because they're never going to believe that. And it doesn't look good. All right. So what can you tell them that's going to buy us a day so that we can get that failed engine? Well, we're still going in under full force to the Bahamas. Same pace. Where Are they going to believe, you know, I don't know what they would say. Or do they just have a policy of, all right, brutal honesty, haven't paid our bills, companies going under, you guys are all fired, just like that CEO of better.com who fired 900 people on the, the, the Zoom call. You guys are all fired, but we need you to stick with us to the bitter end here because only a couple of people can't run a, a cruise ship this big. It takes a good sized crew. So, I mean, and then, and then having, having somebody's making the message over the intercom or do they email it out? Do they text it out? Do they, you know, how's that go? I'd love to know those details. I mean, I feel bad for these people, but it's also like this is something that could go wrong. And so when it does happen, you kind of deal with it. And it's like, it's like that last thing before a company makes that, you know, that, that, um, that statement of we're folding, we're going under literally the ships going down. And we're going to read about the CEO. If he was the captain of this ship, he is out of there because he's not going down with the ship, either literally or figuratively. He is stepping down. He's going to make way for somebody to better helm this ship of a company-ish, whatever. So all these brilliant people, they're really down in the dumps and they're very despondent and very uncertain about what next or even if they'll get paid it's a bit brutal. Those are the people I feel terrible for, the employees, the people who made this ship run. It wasn't their fault that corporate didn't pay the bills. But it's also one of those deals where I think a lot of people put their head in the sand from the standpoint of you always hear rumblings about that this is a big multinational corporation, right? It just is. I was reading that it was developed in order to, uh, to diversify some of the owner's holdings beyond the, I think of the casino industry is what it was. And so you're going to hear rumblings about, well, things aren't great. And so, eh, yeah, it looks like we're going to be in business for a while longer, but we're going to need to trim these portions of the company in order to keep afloat. I'm sure they've had numerous examples of that. So this didn't come as a total shock, but when it happened, you're like, okay, we're on a ship that's being turned around because Florida is that way and we're going that way. All right. That's what we're doing. So one of the crew members was said that they can be forgiven for not paying me. I feel sorry for those guys who just lost their jobs when they thought the pandemic was over. It is so shocking. Crystal Cruise parent company Genting Hong Kong said this week it had exhausted all reasonable efforts to settle million dollars, millions of dollars of outstanding fuel bills and would be seizing operations. At the same time, fuel supplier Peninsula Far East filed a lawsuit in a Florida court claiming it was owed $4.6 million by the company, including $1.2 million from the Crystal Symphony. So 
this is this is a company going under, and they've got probably all kinds of outstanding balances that are going to get you know all these creditors. They're going to put their name in the hat at bankruptcy court, and they're going to get you know a cent on the dollar or whatever it is you know point five cents on the dollar because that's how bankruptcy goes. Because when you you know, take a big cor- cor- corporation and you split it up and liquidate it. There's not a lot left over. The cash flow just isn't um, what it used to be. A judge issued the arrest warrant on a Thursday and the ship changed course for the Bahamas on a Friday. Mm. Announcing the decision to seize operation, Crystal Cruises president Jack Anderson said in a statement, this was an extremely difficult decision, but a prudent one. Given the current business environment and recent developments with our parent company, Genting Hong Kong, in other words, we can't pay our bills. There is no other option besides this. (laughs) What else would you say? Um, it was a difficult decision. No, it's not. It's your only decision. Cause what else are you going to do? How else, if you can't get fuel, how else are you going to get somewhere? How about that? Mr. Pace, an award-winning musician said most passengers blamed Crystal Parents Company, Genting Hong Kong for their predicament. Blame whomever you, you want having to make those arrangements. What a pain in the rear. Um, on a human level, all they needed to find was $3.5 million dollars. Why not pay the bill? They can afford it. All right. So this is this is a quote made um, by Mr. Pace, an award-winning musician. And you notice that it doesn't say an award-winning business owner because he's basically saying, hey, it's only three and a half million. No, it's millions and millions and millions of dollars of unpaid invoices of all, whatever it takes to run a big ship and a ship line. And, um, you know, who knows what corporate owes for other stuff, right? And you just don't know. You have no idea. So it's not about the three and a half million. There's probably outstanding payroll. It's probably outstanding taxes. There's all kinds of stuff. Because when a company starts to go down, all right, can we afford to pay that? Nope. All right, let's pay that one. All right, that's our, that we really need that one. Okay, but if we don't pay that gas bill, that diesel bill, you know, things could get ugly. Well, we can't do anything about it now. So this is the decision we're making. And when they sue us, they sue us, whatever, get an outstanding arrest warrant for the ship as per maritime industry law. I don't know much about that, but it sounds like that's the way it go. So why not pay the bill? They can afford it. Well, when you're in liquidation, actually, you can't. And so that's why you're a musician and not a business owner and or consultant. So He said passengers were all wearing masks, oh, thank heavens, and practicing social distancing, oh, that's good to know, to reduce the risk of a COVID outbreak on a company boat that's going to be liquidated because it's in bankruptcy. I mean, that's that's good protocol. Um, And that would further force them to quarantine if they had a COVID outbreak. I would say COVID outbreak at this point for this ship and this cruise line is probably the least of their concerns. You know what I mean? So yeah, you get a COVID outbreak, all right. But um, it's probably the last COVID outbreak that that ship has with that cruise line, and you know, until it gets re-upped uh, in some other company's um, cruise line. So we're gonna take a quick peek now at Lim Kokte. He's the cruise CEO. He resigns after the ship flees like a pirate ship to the Bahamas to evade the U.S. warrant. All right, we're going to, um, in fairness to the ship's crew, passengers say that the crew has treated us like royalty throughout the tears of losing their jobs. And that's the humanity part that sucks. You're going to have people that are going to lose their jobs, but that is unfortunately the way this ball bounces. The chairman and CEO of the cruise operator, Genting Hong Kong, Lim Kok Tay, has resigned after one of the company's vessels. We know that. The company had to end its business... Um, and its business after the COVID-19 pandemic hit, the company said in a stock exchange filing that the chairman who owns 76% of Genting Hong Kong stepped down on January 1st, 2022. The deputy CEO and president of the company, Ao Fook Yu, oof, that's literally spelled A-U-F-O-O-K-Y-E-W, three separate names. Ao Fook Yu, mm, interesting, also stepped down. 
So we've got we've got the top two guys taking a little, you know what, it's probably time for me to step down and allow somebody else to uh, explore this opportunity. I'm going to go over here and I'm going to go do this job-ish thing over here. They're not going down with the ship, are they? Nope. They're not. I'm going to step down and let somebody else take over the liquidation of said company. The company appears to be moving towards liquidation as its operations are seemingly falling apart, Bloomberg reported. Not funny. And yet in a big scheme of things, it's like, all right, it's the cruise ship industry. You know, what did you expect at some point? And this is unfortunately kind of how this ends. Unpaid fuel bills took us down. Mr. Lim launched the company in 1993. Part of the reason for the launch was to diversify the risk associated with the Genting Group's casino operation in Malaysia. There you go. That's what I was kind of talking about earlier. All right. We diversified, but unfortunately, what we diversified into, that didn't work out either. In May, Genting Hong Kong reported a loss of 1.7 billion big ones. And its stock has dropped more than 50% since the beginning of 2020. I mean, not shocking. A cruise industry? I mean, I've known a bunch of people that have been let go from the cruise industry. And fortunately, there's a labor shortage out there <laughs> in so many industries. They were able to get jobs right back. And, you know, the cruise industry, do you remember at the beginning of the whole Rona thing, there was a bunch of ships that were just out at sea. And, hey, can we come dock in your port? No. No, go back out. And they were just floating around trying to figure out where to go. Hey, we might have a few cases on our ship, but would you mind just letting us hang out in your port until we square what, away what to do? No, go away. I mean, that's literally what happened. Some of these ships are like, all right, it's been four weeks. What do we do here? The company said in a filing to end its businesses that they expect to run out of funding at the end of the month. End of January, and this is January 21st. I'm recording this to you on January 25th. So they've got about a week to go. They were literally and figuratively running on fumes, weren't they? That sucks. But businesses go under all the time. This is the way this goes. The company's shipbuilding subsidiary, MV Werf Werften, it's German, so you got a whole bunch of consonants right in a row there. Filed for insolvency in a German court earlier this month. So you got a bunch of stuff going sideways for this company. Not good. But not not unexpected either, right? As China is employing a COVID zero strategy and Hong Kong is suffering an outbreak of the highly transmissible Omicron variant, the fall of Genting Hong Kong reveals an Asian tourism industry that has been reluctant to fully open. I think a lot of tourism has been reluctant to fully open, right? Goes on to say, Carnival and Royal Caribbean cruises are starting to recover, but they're not there yet in the Americas. I remember we talked a lot about the beginning of the Rona that uh, the cruise industry would need some major, major governmental funding to keep keep going moving forward. I don't really know how all that worked out. I didn't really follow that. I'm following this story because uh, cruise industry, a little bit outside of my realm, besides the fact I don't really like going on a cruise. So that's just me, though. Maybe there's another cruise out there that, um, you know, would be cool. But again, I kind of like to do my own thing and cruise ship, just not my thing, might be somebody else's thing. And this article says 4.6 million in unpaid fuel bills. Uh, dating back to 2017. So, you know, we've got five solid years, four solid years. You've got some stuff going on behind the scenes. Rona comes along. That kind of puts it over the edge. Here we are in 2022. They're still trying to make it happen. Early 2022. Yep. No, we're done. Receivership time. Can't you can't outrun the creditors. You can only outrun them for so long. And then some judge in Florida is like, yep, outstanding warrant. Sorry, guys, you needed to surrender that ship. So wild story, right? I mean, it's just kind of like, okay, it's not, it's not truly wild from the standpoint of something crazy happened. But could you imagine being on that ship? And you're like, are you kidding me? No, no, we're not. What would you like to do? Tough, tough trip. How'd your trip go? That was great until the end. What do you mean? Here's my story. 
I mean, so like 700 people had that story. Hey, Johnny, how was your trip? It was great. But at the end, uh, we were like a pirate ship just heading out, trying not to get arrested. What? Yeah, that happened. All right. Thanks so much for being part of the Seattle Real Estate Podcast. I will catch up with you soon. Until then, take care. We'll talk again. Bye for now.